All right, it's time to get Mr. Echidna's impending disaster for Reezer Season 2, Episode 17, The Beginning of Amelia's Trial. When I first discovered ReZero, something I never expected to see was Lolly Amelia head padding Betelgeuse. But as we true. know, anything's possible in I mean, shit, don't let your bean trains be true. You too can get your own half elf like that. This scene? Yeah, this is pretty, pretty fucking crazy. After seeing season one, and who Betelgeuse really is, is quite a shock. Head padding Betelgeuse. But as we know, anything's possible in ReZero Season 2. Except, of course, playing the opening. To be honest, I'd much rather keep getting these extended 29-minute episodes, but I am starting to feel bad for the singer. I mean, she made this whole song for them, and they're just refusing to play it. I feel like... I respect the studio so much for going out of the way to make these episodes longer, just so that, like, the actual anime episode can contain as much as content as possible and just be as faithful as to the source material as possible. It is kind of funny, though. How they skip the opening and the openings are bangers and yeah, there's like the multiple like 29 minute episodes, bro. Holy shit. There is so much like as we like every episode straight up is 29 minutes and 31 seconds. There's one 29 minutes and 01 seconds for episode 22. But from 18 to 25, which we have left, all over 29 minutes. Crazy. I feel like that's kind of a slap in the face. We did get to hear the ending for the first time, which was nice, but it also made me sad because I really didn't want this episode to end. We got some new characters, an epic transition scene, a stunning mm. cliffhanger, chibi Dona, and a lot of information about Amelia's past. But as always, this episode left us with even more questions than we had before. As usual. Who are Amelia's parents? Why is the witch cult being so nice? What's inside the seal? And how did Amelia get a basketball? Straight motherfucking balling. A long that's a very good question. That ball right there. You know that in Attack on Titan, there's a moment where people don't think about how Zeke plays baseball. Right? People don't think about that shit. Like, hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. He's actually playing baseball, but no one, no one knows how to play baseball. What's going on? How, how could these people... You know, these like modern and, and the existence of like coffees. There's like little <laughs> Easter eggs thrown in the earlier parts of Attack on Titan, and later you realize it's like, oh my god, it was there the entire time. This ball? Hmm. Another one of those things, maybe. Fucking balling. A long time ago, back when Amelia was still a lolly, she lived in a peaceful elven settlement located in Ellier Forest, the same setting as Frozen Bonds. The village was mostly normal, except Amelia was often locked inside a room for protection, which by the way is literally the same thing Subaru did to her in the Wrath If story, so right off the bat we're already seeing some okay. red flags. We're okay. introduced to Amelia's mother figure. Who are we protecting Amelia from? Beings like Regulus, I guess. Figure an elf named Fortuna. She may not be Amelia's biological mother, but she's still a biological MILF as far as I'm concerned. In fact, I might even change my name to Fortunate. In reality though, Fortuna is the younger sister of Amelia's biological father, so yep. for anyone who's still confused about Amelia's family tree, this week's episode made it a lot easier to understand. Father is an elf. I mean, I'm assuming Fortuna is an elf, right? If assuming Fortuna is not an elf and she's also a half-elf, that means that the brother is also a half-elf, meaning the mother must also be a half-elf for Amelia to be a half-elf, but it's making more sense that she's an elf, her brother is the elf, and the mom is the probably human or something else. Father, so for anyone who's still confused about Amelia's family tree, this week's episode made it a lot easier to understand. Amelia is the witch, but she's also the witch's daughter, so the mm. witch is her mother, and the witch's yeah, yeah. mother is Amelia, yeah. whose yeah. mother figure is Fortuna, yeah. who's yeah. also her aunt, and her mm -hmm. aunt's brother is her dad, who's yeah. married to her mom, but her other dad is Puck, mm -hmm. and Subaru is her dad. And, and Goose is also dad too. Daddy. In conclusion, Amelia has too many fucking parents. Yep. If you saw Frozen Bonds, you might remember this frame. It was very short, but Betelgeuse did in fact appear in that OVA. Though I should stop calling him Betelgeuse, because apparently his Juice. old name was Juice. We haven't seen much- Can't tell if it's like actually his real name or if it's like a pet name and... I don't know. Does he get Betel added, you know, in front of Goose when he becomes an Archbishop? Because he's just a bishop at this point, implying he has no witch factor. Right? So maybe the Betel part gets added on later on. His old name was Juice. 
We haven't seen much of him recently, so I'd almost forgotten how talented his voice Giga actor Chad. really is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. Both He's Juice too good. and Fortuna delivered impeccable performances, and together they made this my favorite episode of Sword Art Online. In case the anime... <laughs> yeah, because this is Asuna. It, it is crazy that a pairing here, right? It's Kirito and Asuna. They're always together! Episode. Wait, wait, is Kirito and Asuna voice actors a thing in real life? Does anybody know? Because if they are, that'd be even crazier. Anybody know? No, they're not. They're just... Just friends? Okay. ...of Sword Art Online. In case the anime didn't make it obvious enough, the light novel confirmed it by saying Fortuna smiled at him affectionately. And mm -hmm. knowing what we know about the witch cult, it was pretty shocking to learn that Fortuna was in love with the archbishop responsible for- Well... Fortuna was not in love with this better use. Fortuna's love with, in love with this juice. Now this is, you know, hundred years later. I actually don't know when the start of this happens, but this is the start of Betelgeuse, not Juice. And he gets the witch factor, and it's known that he's very incompatible with it. Maybe that is why he just went crazy like that. And another thing that's interesting, remember how we know how Satala and Witch of Envy are actually two separate personalities born from this incompatibility issue with the witch factor, which I'm assuming... I don't know when that happened. There's like either it could have been the witch factor of MB or it could be when she consumed all the other witches and then that was the incompatibility that, you know, birthed the witch of MB. I'm not sure, but, you know, incompatible, him going crazy like that. I think it makes sense. Affectionately and knowing what we know about the witch cult, it was pretty shocking to learn that Fortuna was in love with the archbishop responsible for about half of the witch cult's murders. Like, mm. really, Fortuna? Well, Come on, are you serious? But from what it looks- Oh, come on! Yes, I'm serious with an S-I. Huh, interesting. But, I feel like... <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not this Betrick is the fortune I fell in love with! But yeah, Betrick was the most active, the most res And that's another thing. If you take into account the most active, it's, it's uh, Regulus and Betrick in the modern timeline. And... Why would they be active? Well, I don't see other people really just going crazy about, oh my god, my witch, my witch, day of the ordeal. It, it seems like better. I don't know if other archbishops are like that too. It doesn't really seem like it. Lai was kind of, kind of gave me better use vibes just a little bit based on his mannerisms and the way he talked, but I don't really talk about, oh, for the witch, for the witch. I wonder if better use is the only one that's actively trying to fucking awake the, I don't know, the witch of envy, but what's going on here? Murders. Like really, Fortuna? Come on, are you serious? But from what Serious, it looks like, yes. the witch cult was actually helping the village by delivering supplies, so it got me thinking that maybe it wasn't always an evil organization. Juice but Regulus, right? But what about Regulus being an archbishop? Up until I saw Regulus at the end of the episode, I thought that like, you know, it's only the church is good and they're not like radicalized. And there's like a turning point when people become radicalized. But Regulus is still the same. I don't know any of his followers, right? We don't really see any of the other people at the church. Can we just assume that it's only Regulus that's crazy and the rest of the church not? Or is it just Betrigus's men or Juice's men that are not crazy? They're, they're helping out these elves who's relocated into the forest. Who knows what happened leading up to this moment, but... ...that maybe it wasn't always an evil organization. Juice appeared to be relatively mm. normal, at least until he met Amelia and burst into tears. It was almost like Juice valued Amelia the same way Betelgeuse valued Satella. Mm hmm And that could explain why, you know, Better Look Juice is, like, crying. Because Amelia is supposed to be his savior, but Better Juice is, you know, all for Satala. So, is this, like, confirmation that Amelia represents Satala and shows him salvation? Second coming of Satala? Reincarnation, even if it's not possible? I don't know. Hey, Better Juice valued Satella. <laughs> so, either Juice was the ultimate lollicon. She looked good for a Hey, chill! Four year old. Or Amelia was just very special for some reason. Fortuna was described as a guardian, meaning she's responsible for watching over the seal, which is a Key. big mysterious door that can only be opened by SEAL Team 6. If you want my opinion, it's either a lolly dungeon or the final resting place of Minerva, but it could also be something a lot scarier. Final resting place of Minerva is a random fucking guess? I mean, this is just a meme, the lolly meme, I get it, but why would you ever just guess Minerva's resting place out of fucking nowhere? That makes it sound like this is not a guess, but Echidna, 
obviously reading ahead in the source material, right? He knows of this shit, then giving extra kind of context. Is like, like, what is the logic that leads into you believing it? Because clearly to any anime only person, this is clearly fucking Satala's seal. What other seal have we even heard of in this show, right? The level one thinking is Satala, but beyond that, a lolly dungeon, a meme. Minerva? Why? that can only be opened by SEAL Team 6. If you want my opinion, it's either a lolly dungeon or the final resting place of Minerva, but it could also be something a lot scarier. Right. Whatever it is, there's obviously a reason it was locked. That's crazy that he doesn't even say Satala. And he can't say Satala. Because that's too stupid of a fucking answer. Because that's a level 1 thinking for a show like ReZero. But everyone watching this for the first time, when they hear SEAL, Especially in, with people around elves, like, don't you think it's Satala? It's very interesting to me that Echidna didn't even mention Satala here, which pretty much confirms that it is not? ...inside the seal, so it could be very dangerous to let it out. In the light novel, it's described as... In the light novel, dangerous to let it out. Very dangerous to let it out. Is to let it out. Is to let it out. In the light novel, it's described as exempt from the laws of the world, and what I like about that description... This snow is not snow. The whiteness. This is not the real law. This is not the world that we know. ...is that it also applies to Subaru. For some reason, he can see the unseen hands. He can yeah. remember people who've been erased. And yeah, well, 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 the unseen hands. So my interpretation of this, and people say I'm wrong, and it's only the fucking light novel or the fucking source material people. And Tape has apparently confirmed at an episode 15. The unseen hand was unseen from Subaru. We didn't see anything. It's invisible. Right? Cop Tape confirmed that. And then people are like, well, don't you know that he lies? He intentionally lied there, bro. It's like, are, are you serious? Come on. Come, come on. The other thing is, I think that it was simply Subaru, like, dying and then having his miasma strengthened. And then being able to see the unseen hand. That's how I thought in season one. But we also know that... Every time he dies, the miasma does not stack permanently. There may be a new... The, the, the baseline, I'm still unsure, but it spikes after each death and then tapers off as time goes on. But this unseen hand thing, it's very interesting how Subaru was able to see it, but that's my interpretation. The other thing with Rem is the connection with the witch. He was always able to remember who Rem was, even after Rem got disappeared by the Fog of Elimination in the previous runs, and even now after Gluttony. Um, it's also implied that Beatrice, right? I think the web novel cut content said that Biko has pretty much implied that Rem is not really erased from her point of view. There might be some other stuff going on with the Hidden Library, I'm not sure, but it just feels to me that there is a connection with the witches that's letting Subaru do this shit. For some reason, he can see the unseen hands, he can remember people who've been erased, and he can die and come back to life. It's That's the authority of Envy, Return by Death, which I still think Subaru is using as a proxy through Satella rather than him actually using it on his own, just like Invisible Providence. To life. It's obvious that the laws of the world do not apply to him, so whatever the seal is might have something in common with Subaru. His dick is the key. We, we got him. Subaru is the key. The lock? Subaru is the key. Oh my god. Oh, and Fortuna said that everyone in her family has mean eyes, which is also something Subaru- Yeah, Subaru also has the mean eyes. ...can relate to. Subaru Fortuna's ass is not the key, it's the lock. His mean eyes that he got from his mother are mm -hmm. mentioned quite often in the novels, and I just thought that was interesting, though it probably- Three whites. It is generally referred to as English as Sanpaku eyes, and refers to eyes in which either the white space above or below the iris is revealed. But mean eyes, Subaru has it. Fortuna has it. Amelia has it. Why? Subaru is Amelia's dad. <laughs> Future Subaru is Amelia's dad. If we assume that, if we assume this crackpot theory that Future Subaru is Amelia's dad, then the grooming allegations are even more insane. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit, bro.
dude this is insane we, we we thought we were already memeing with the subaru the groomer you know <laughs> which is not the case right it's a situation set up by roswell but <laughs> this is getting even worse <laughs> oh, oh shit i i know rudy is gonna be better in super bro if this is true rudy is gray rat is better than super oh no oh no probably doesn't mean anything another reason this trial was so difficult for amelia is because she's got no it's just a coincidence guys it's it's just a coincidence it's, it's just a coincidence Bleed doesn't mean anything another reason this trial was so difficult for amelia is because she's got to watch over juice and fortuna in the same way that they watched over her when she was little but because of the trial, Amelia can't interfere whatsoever. No matter what's about to happen, all she can do is watch helplessly. No. We know that Amelia was frozen for about a hundred years, which is well above the human life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Elves can obviously live a lot. Yeah, that means Regulus is not a human, or he has powers that retains his youth somehow. Goose, we know, is a spirit. Elves are old as fuck longer than humans but betelgeuse and regulus are definitely not elves yet both of them have survived without aging for over a hundred years yeah. and from what the cliffhanger implied they were also a big part of amelia's past and the other thing is again regulus personality change doesn't exist up until this part i thought that the church was kind of normal kind of just like very wholesome and they're just trying repenting for their sins but nah man it's just juice and his men Regulus is still the same Regulus that we saw in the beginning of season two. Regulus is one of my top five characters. Not really? Not because I support his decisions or like him as a person, but because I respect how well written his character is. Oh, okay. For the first fucking time, you motherfuckers have compare me to a character that actually matters a lot so far it's just been random bullshit characters like fucking snapper from viral hit but regulus is a well-written character tell me more he's one of the most self-absorbed villains i've ever seen in fiction and That's although he's despicable i love watching him and just seeing how he twists the meaning of different concepts to fit his warped outlook yeah he's very good at just yapping and just doing mental gymnastics to prove why he's the victim in a situation which then creates the reason for him to be on the offensive literally Fortuna says, what's your name? And Regulus somehow yapped and turned it against Fortuna and gave him a reason to attack. It's fucking crazy. Gun reality. Just from the few bits of dialogue we have gotten, it's already possible to predict his opinions and reactions to different scenarios, and I feel like being able to so perfectly understand a character's mind and how they think is a pretty rare occurrence in fiction. Now, I wonder why he thinks this way. I wonder also if he's compatible with the witch factor. Also, his ears had shading, so he's automatically best boy. <laughs> what a random detail. Um, is there any other detail, Regulus, that we should make note of? His eye color? I don't think that really matters. His earring is pretty interesting that there's like a little pin here and there's no connection with this little teardrop. I don't know. His drip? I don't know. It's just all white, right? What we learned from any news content was Regulus is just represent just... just blank slate of just white which kind of like contradicts what greed is because the opposite of white and color is black which is the combination of everything and you assume that if you're so greedy and you want every color possible then it'd be black but he's white to show that he's like this hollow ghoul that wants more and more but can never fulfill this empty desire that stems from his greed and therefore white I don't know. Shading, so he's automatically best boy. But on a serious note, this was the best cliffhanger of the season. We've gotten one pretty much every- Oh yeah, the soundtrack that plays when regularly showed up, it's very unnerving. It's like these like metallic sounds. I don't know. It's like metals like screeching. Something about it, it was like, oh shit, a bad guy's about to happen. Episode, but everything about Regulus's entrance was just perfect. Easily the highlight Scary. of the episode by far, and I can't imagine anyone was able to watch that without getting goosebumps. Until Regulus <laughs> or should I say juice bumps? The witch cult wasn't portrayed as an evil organization. Although Juice was very odd, he didn't feel like a villain. But as we know, a lot can change in a hundred years, and from what it looks like, Regulus might be responsible for what happened. Again, this episode Most likely. I mean Regulus shows up, something bad's gonna happen, and he probably fucked his forest up, and then eventually Amelia goes berserk and freezes everything. I think that the uh Satellite showing a cliffhanger was obviously better. Well, you know, Satellite is the main fucking 
witch, right? It's like everyone's so that's that's where all the mystery is. So when Satala showed up there, that was fucking crazy. But this regular stuff was also very entertaining. So it left us with a lot of questions. So if you've got a theory about what's in the seal or how Juice turned into Battle Goose, I'd be happy to. Um, I, Juice turned into Battle Goose makes sense to me because he's a bishop and not an archbishop and an archbishop you've told me echidna specifically that we need a witch factor and the incompatibility that we also know could make him crazy like that that makes a lot of sense to me the seal i don't know i i have no quest no theories about the seal other than being satala because that's the only seal that i am aware of i i don't know what could a seal be a portal to a different world back to japan no, it makes no sense. Or does it? <laughs> Imagine the seal is for a portal to Japan, and that's how Satala knew Subaru. <laughs> well, that makes no fucking sense. That's a stupid theory. <laughs> but if, if, if we're... Because, like, if we abandon the Satala having, like, a past lover who is Subaru's reincarnation or someone that resembled him, then one has to wonder how the fuck could Satala know Subaru for that much long time. <laughs> the portal to Japan! And then the basketball! <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The basketball is the Hoshin of the Wilderness. That's right. Beings like... No, but... I mean, don't you jinx... Like, let, let's say Hoshin of the Wilderness showed up a long time ago. And fucking... Hey, everybody! There's a great sport called basketball! And then they pr made basketballs. <sighs> Maybe this is the Japan. And they grabbed the fucking basketball as a souvenir, as a gift, and it's in Amelia's room. So mom and dad, wait, wait, uh, should we should we go fucking Skimichi Moon Fantasy route, where mom and dad are like these beings called Grants, these superhumans that are just like world travelers, right? <laughs> Maybe mom and dad from here he took the portal to a different world, came back with the basketball. I don't know, man. Beyond the waterfall. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe this gate does take us beyond the waterfall, and then you know, it's easy. That, that. All right, I'm down with that theory. I was memeing about it being Japan, but now with the basketball existing, like, <laughs> I, we we could play around with that. Do I believe it's true? Fuck no. Every theory I make, there's like a 0.001% chance. I'm just trying to use the. Things that I have seen and try to do mental gymnastics to try to make a theory that makes sense to me, but other than that, I don't know. The seal or how juice turned into battle goose, I'd be happy to read your comments below. I'm very thankful they didn't try to squeeze in an extra chapter like they usually do because this week's episode ended up being <laughs> different laws. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> this is supposed to represent a lawless world right it's not supposed to be bound by the laws of this world so like oh my god an isekai portal just makes more and more sense all right what do we have we have the basketball we have the this this region is supposed to be like outside of the laws of this world uh somehow satala knowing super who before i don't know. is there anything else any other isekai memes that we can make with this theory I mean, gates and locks are not foreign to this world. I'm trying to think of like, oh my god, a lock? How could a lock exist back in these times? That makes no sense. No, 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 I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Any, any design? <laughs> if only we had like the letters fucking Nippon here somewhere. I, I, don't, I don't know. Comments below. I'm very thankful they didn't try to squeeze in an extra chapter like they usually do because this week's episode ended up being the most faithful adaptation of the season. Satala fell in love with Kenichi. No, Al's arm being lost was hinted from the gladiator shit that he did when he was first brought in and was hanging out in Valakia. The arm loss was during the gladiator shit. But hold up, hold up. <laughs> so Satala took this gate to go to Japan and met Kenichi, and Kenichi gave her a basketball and raised her up and is thankful. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't fucking know. Oh one second, hold one second. My teeth fucking overboard. Almost burnt down the goddamn kitchen. Uh anything else? Anything else? 
Su Satala thinks Subaru is Kenichi. Sure, sure, fuck it, let's go with that. Oh, and the pacing was perfect as well. Not a single moment felt rushed, and although it wasn't as exciting as some of the previous episodes were, it's- WAIT! I need to go to take a piss for this. Well, hold on. let me take a piss and think about this. Like, I, I, I got something crazy with the eye theory. Hold up. Okay, 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 okay. What do we know? What do we know? We, it, the, the, the theory right now is this portal goes to Japan. Alright? The theory is this, this portal goes to Japan. We know that Amelia has sharp eyes. Fortuna has sharp eyes. Does Fortuna have sharp... Wait, wait. Does Fortuna have sh sharp eyes? Hold up. Does she or not? Hold up, hold up. The comment was, Amelia, you have sharp eyes like your mom or like me? So the sharp eyes is a... Okay, 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 okay. Okay, ah, shit. That, 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 I can't do mental gymnastics as well anymore. Fortuna's side has sharp eyes, meaning dad's side, right? Fortuna and her brother, the dad, has sharp eyes. Ah, that doesn't really work. That doesn't... I was trying to fucking somehow justify how Subaru's mom has sharp eyes and therefore the dad went beyond this gate and the dad is the elf and fucked Subaru's mom and then... It's maybe Amelia. I don't know. I'm just trying to just really just think and try to make sense of the details happening. Um, uh, fuck. It's the sh maybe the sharp eyes means fucking nothing. It's just a coincidence, man. I th I thought I was cooking with that shit. I, I uh, how does Kenichi fit in? Well, Kenichi can't because the mom is because it's the dad is the elf, right? The dad is the elf, so the mom must be the human, and the mom being Subaru's. But, the, but it's the dad's side that is, I mean, who's to say that the mom's side can't have sharp eyes, right? I don't fucking know. We're, 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 we're overcooking right now. We are overcooking. The amount of cut content was at an all-time low, and the pacing was perfect as well. Not a single moment felt rushed, and although it wasn't as exciting as some of the previous episodes were, it's... It was very exciting for me to get more answers from the past, but in terms of action and hype, I guess it wasn't. Most likely going to make the top five for me, and of course, it was another 10 out, 10. 10 out of 10 episode. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like to support my channel. Hey, it's Echidna, but with a Echidna profile picture. Why is Echidna eating a donut in his profile picture? Because maybe it's Boston cream and there's a nut coming out or the hole supposed to represent a kid in this hole. I don't know. But hey, here is Mr. A Kid Nuts video. Please go check it out. This video has definitely shocked me in terms of the things that's been apparent to us in the entire time. I, I guess one of the most important things is the, the sight of a fucking basketball in Amelia's house, right? The basketball and like this portal and like the eyes and we're trying to cook to see how does it make sense that uh, potentially Subaru and Amelia is related because somebody went through the gate and fucked Subaru's mom. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but a lot to really think about from this one. But hey, I'll see you next time.